Hello everybody and welcome to number 27. Today it's a seminal standoff shootout between Ferrari and Porsche. Now at some point I think we have all dreamed of owning one of these two cars. Maybe not these particular cars but certainly a Porsche or a Ferrari. They have to be the most iconic brands out there. Perhaps if you're of my age group you will remember Magnum PI and this car will have really special memories for you. If you're a bit younger, maybe Bad Boys and the 911 shape is what you're after. Yes, maybe Bad Boys had the 964, but the main shape is still there, really. Now, it's quite interesting because both factories started out very close to each other. The first production car for Ferrari was in 1947 with the 125S. And a year later, Porsche came out with the 356. Also, something that many people may sort of know in the back of their minds but not fully realise is that the emblems on both badges are prancing horses. In the case of, of Porsche, it's uh, to do with Stuttgart, which is where the cars were made. In the case of Ferrari, uh, I don't think it has any ties to Modena or anything like that. It's just the, the sort of sense of speed and what it symbolises. The 308 was the third in line of the cheap Ferraris. Previous to this, Enzo had pretty much dismissed anything that wasn't a V12, but starting with the Dino, which he didn't even deign with a Ferrari badge, they decided to go a little bit more mass market. The Dino was a V6. After that came the GT4, which is actually essentially the same car as this. The chassis is the same, just a bit longer. The engine is the same. And they had their flat plane V8. Supposedly, it produced 250 horsepower. Now, we know that Ferrari was always a little bit optimistic, so I'm not sure how true that is, but actually, when I drive it, it doesn't feel far off. It's also supposed to weigh 1,090 kilograms, which is really pretty light, and um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but in any case, it, it's an interesting little car. It does have its quirks, uh, as we'll see when we take it out for a drive. It's not perfect, but um, I do really, really like this. At the time, the 308 launched for in the States for about $45,000. And from what I can tell, these went for, the SCs went for about $30,000. It's hard to get the original figures, but either way, I think there's a price difference of about a third between the two. The SC was almost the last cast attempt that Porsche had before they were going to kill off the 911. The 928 came out at the same time and that was supposed to replace it. So this was supposed to be the last ever 911. They weren't going to bother developing or doing anything else. The thing is, it carried on selling so well that the 911 just carried on thriving and is still here to this day. The SC had the three litre engine. It went from 190, I think, horsepower to 210, depending on what year variant you got. This is 204 or it's one of the later variants anyway, it's a 1982 car. Surprisingly, it weighs, in theory, 30 kilograms more than the 308. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Looking at them, you'd say it'd be the lighter car, but perhaps the Ferrari does have some sort of lighter construction with a tubular chassis and so on. I don't know. So why am I comparing these two particular cars today though? Because really, in many ways, a 930 would be a better comparison, certainly in terms of price when they were new. Well, there's two things really. Well, a 930 has another 50 horsepower on top of that, but it's more to do with what you can do today. So if you want to buy your dream Ferrari or Porsche today, and you have a certain amount of money, these two are far more comparable. You can get a 308, like a decent 308 for about 50 grand. But to get a good 930, I think you're looking at at least 80 to 90. So they're just way more expensive. Whereas this, this is a particularly nice SC. It's probably going to go for 45K, but essentially a good SC goes for between 40 and 50. So yes, slightly cheaper than the equivalent 308, but there's not that much in it really. So I think they're going to make a much better comparison. Once again, in a 911, these have got so much character. It's like being an old friend. This has the 915 gearbox, which is a little bit trickier to use than the later ones that came in the 3.2s, which I think were called 950s.
I do love these old 911s. The shape, although maybe not quite as dramatic as on the 308, it's still just iconic and fantastic. And this is a nice car. It's, it's had work done. It's just been restored and it really does drive well. The gearbox is very long throw and you have to kind of know what to do with, the, with those gearboxes. You have to know how to use 915s, but when you do, the actual shift is very satisfying to use. It's, it's got more of a mechanical feel than the later gearboxes. In terms of outright power, it certainly isn't a ball of fire, but it's, um, it's got enough to, to sort of keep you interested. And the gearbox, once you get used to it, is quite sweet. I'm finding the pedal spacing a bit odd, but maybe that's actually because the Ferrari one is odd. Or, I don't know, the brake pedal comes out quite a lot more than the throttle pedal. Heel and towing would be very difficult in this car. And the handling is actually really good. The steering feels great, and the suspension seems to work a lot better on my 308. I don't know if that's my particular 308 that we're talking about or if it's just better on this car, but certainly it's much more controlled and it doesn't skip around as much as the, the 308 does. Let's see if we can get past this car. Lots of cars around today, unfortunately. Both the cars, the 308 and the 911, have three litre engines. This is a six cylinder flat six, air cooled. On the Ferrari, it's a an eight cylinder, water cooled. And funnily enough, both of the cars that came after had updated versions of both engines that were bored out to 3.2. The Ferrari in the 328 is a 3.2 and this is a 3.2 as well. No, not this. The, the Carrera that came after this is a 3.2. I never realized that SC actually stands for Super Carrera. But for a long time, SCs didn't have the cachet they weren't appreciated very much. It was the black sheep of the 911 family along with the 964. In recent years, they have actually increased in value again. God, the road is so busy. But it's still probably one of the most affordable ways for you to get into 911 ownership. I have driven this car before. And I was told by the owner that when I drove it last time, it had an issue with the, with the rear suspension and a couple of the bearings. It does seem to be driving much better than before. Right, let's see if I can get it into reverse. Yes, I can. Okay. See if we can get a clearish run. Yeah, car coming, so go. It's really smooth characterful engine. The long throw of the gearbox is a little bit incongruous. Loads of feel through the steering. The steering is lovely and the handling is really, really nice. It does feel a bit smaller than my 308, but not massively so. And I have to say at the moment, the way the steering on my 308 is, and it does need redoing, this is the better handling car. I don't know what it would be like on the limit. Obviously, I'm not pushing it overly at the moment, but it's a really, it's a really nice car to drive. And in many ways, it's, it's nicer than my 308 as things stand at the moment. The engine has got a character all of its own, much less aggressive than the 308 engine in sound. Driving position is miles better. The interior is definitely much better as well. It's just better put together. And it's, it feels like a very sorted car. This has been lowered slightly, so maybe it's not typical of the family. My 308 is pretty much standard, but I'm really impressed with this little SC. Got a couple of Porsches behind me. They're probably a bit frustrated. They're much more modern at the slow pace that I'm doing, but I'm enjoying it. It really, it's really great on a bumpy road like this. Whereas the 308 tends to skip over bumps, you feel this is really controlled. It doesn't have the same sort of 
willingness to pivot round the corner that the 308 does, but it does steer just fine. It's a different experience than the 308, but it really isn't any worse. It's actually very, very nice. Right, let's swap over to the 308 and see how that compares. has put a little bit of a spanner in the works because it's much better than I thought it would be. Uh, I already had a kind of a vague script in mind because I'd driven it before, but they've improved it. It's been to center gravity where they've done some work to the suspension. They fixed the issue with the, the bearing on the rear and it now drives a lot better. than I remembered. lacking 40 horsepower but it doesn't really feel like it this is definitely more sprightly and you can tell that it's a, a mid-engine car so when I drove the SC I was so impressed with it I thought actually it handled better than this and in some ways it does certainly the suspension works better and the car skips around less and I was really impressed with the steering it's got so much feel and it feels so natural we have to bear in mind that the steering rack on this still has to be refurbed, so there's some play around the centre. So it's really only when it loads up that I think you get the way it's supposed to feel. On a straight like this, it, it, it's not nice. It's vague and it wanders around, but that's not really the fault of a 308. The gear change, you won't be surprised to hear, is so much nicer in this car. It just is. It's that so, so long throw, that 915 box. Although it has a nice feel to it, it's just not right for what's supposed to be a sports car. The steering is also lighter on this. It has a nimbler feel. And I remember from a couple of days ago when I took it out, it's really so much nicer now chucking it down this road that it's had a bit of work done to the suspension and that it's got a little bit more negative camber at the front working really well. I'm going to go out and say it, I prefer this engine. It's not Ferrari's finest and those Porsche flat fours are really nice but this is just, especially now that I've got the exhaust sorted, it just feels a little bit more special. position is definitely way better in the Porsche than it is in this. Um, you've got a really long reach, the wheel is cantered, does work much better in the Porsche. In the interior, I'd say this looks more dramatic, definitely more interesting in a way, and the Porsche is without doubt much better put together. Unsurprisingly, it's a more visceral experience this, but it's not as clear cut as I thought it would be. I expected the Ferrari to come on top, to come out on top rather easily, apart from in terms of, you know, being a day-to-day -day car, being easier to live with, but in terms of the actual visceral feel, they are just very different, but I don't think you'd be disappointed with either car. I'd love to be able to come down really hard on one side or the other, and that's what I thought I was going to do in terms of value per car. I thought the 308 was really much more, offered you a lot more, but it's not quite the case. I guess it comes down to the individual. This definitely feels more special. It's a different kind of car. It has a bit more to it. If it came, if it came down to it and I had to put my own money down, I would rather, at this stage anyway in my life, have the 308. It's just, for the same money, it's a more high octane experience. But 
that SC is a good drive as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm sorry that I'm not able to verbalize what I think better. I'm not a professional road tester. So it tends to be like just a normal bloke talking about cars, but you know, they're both great cars. Well, we were on the way to go and film some exterior shots and the absolute stereotypical thing has happened and the Ferrari's broken down, believe it or not. So that's, that's really gutting. And also it's why there's no exterior shots on this video. So sorry about that. But again, I will staunchly defend the 308. It's simply a clutch cable that has gone and that could happen to any car. But all the same, it is funny that when you're doing a video, Porsche versus Ferrari, <laughs> the Ferrari will have to be towed home. So um, there's not much I can do about that. That's, um, that's just a fact. And what a way to end the video. Uh, but it's been a real privilege driving both cars and, you know, I love both of them and when I got back in the Influenza afterwards and drove it, it did re-acquit itself to some degree as you saw in the video, um, but the SC really did impress me. Well, I've got to say it's a massive thumbs up to the AA. I'm well impressed. Chris, who came out, I thought they'd literally just call out a, um, you know, a tow and get it on top of a truck and bring it home, but no. He went under it and he jerry-rigged a new wire and I'm gonna to have to replace it, it's only a temporary fix, but I managed to drive it home. And uh, what a lovely guy, works on classic cars. So Chris, great to meet you and well done AA. For everybody else, thank you very much for watching and don't be too judgmental on the poor influenza because that clutch cable broke, it's, it's one of those things really. Uh, thanks very much for watching and see you for the next video.